this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, y'all? We're live. Uh, you guys know Austin. You've seen him around. What up, um, y'all? I'll, I'll let him do a quick introduction and then we'll roll right into it. Welcome, everybody. This is Supreme Being. We're streaming on Facebook and this is also being recorded. So I have a special guest. You guys know normally I just come off and talk and it's rare that I bring a special guest. So, you know, this man is of substance and, you know, he's important. So, Austin, the floor hey. is yours, my friend. Yo, what up, everybody? Uh, my name is Austin Pericio. I'm a young entrepreneur and businessman uh, currently working on developing a real estate business. It's called an actual acquisitions business where we focus on wholesaling real estate. Um, we're actually in the process as well as beginning to get funds and start take on properties. Um, and also, I have another podcast called The Road to Freedom Podcast, which is my primary focus is spreading the message of free thinking. Um, but that's a little bit about me. And uh, the train's not going to stop for a long, long time. Love it, bro. Uh, thanks for coming on, man. And, you know, also just a shining example of somebody who really just plugged in with the basics and, you know, stuck with them, was committed, disciplined. You know, he started out doing his thing. And now, I mean, he'll, he'll tell you more of the story because we'll get into it. But uh, is now is doing his own thing. And that's one thing that I love to see is people come in, grow, develop, and then start their own podcast, grow their own businesses. And that's ideally what we want because then we create powerhouses that then go and spread the message and are shining examples of what success is, dude. So, you know, I know uh, before you got into wholesaling, bro, like I remember the story about like you working with your brother and yeah. going from like San Diego to Tennessee. <laughs> Can you get into that a little bit, dude? Because it's a really good story. Yeah, I mean... The, the story goes far, pretty far back, I mean, even to when I was a kid. But, I mean, back then, um, I mean, before I got into wholesaling, my primary focus at the time was I was I actually had two full-time jobs. And mm. I was like, I remember I, I didn't feel like that was what I was worth. I actually had another business called Colorless Little Details that I started when I was 18. I dropped out of college and I started that business. It was an automotive mobile detailing business. And um, I ran that for about a year and a half. And one day when I went out to go to a customer's house. I had a whole entire regimen for that day. And um, when I went out to my, so I was actually at that time, I was living in a studio with my mom. We had four dogs and it was just my mom and I together. Um, my family was splitting apart at that time. And I remember Cutlass was like one of the things that I knew was going to take my family out of mm -hmm. like struggling with money. Anyways, long story short, that day I went out to develop this business from the ground up. That day I went out to the, that van where I parked it at. And when I was walking, I turned around the corner and it wasn't there. Um, and I was wondering, man, did they get towed by the CHP? Long story short with that, they found it on the side of the freeway, like two hours away from my house and completely gutted. I went to go check it out to hopefully see if we can recuperate some of the stuff, but mm -hmm. completely gone. Everything was taken from that. But fast forwarding a couple more years, um, I ended up getting two full time jobs. Um, I was going from different places like I used to work mm -hmm. at Chevy. I used to work at Ford and Kia as a salesperson. I stopped doing that and had two different jobs. One was for the Navy. One was for a, I was a valet. Um, and then, yeah, I quit those two jobs and I started flipping cars full time. And then when I started flipping cars full time, Mike Wolf, um, actually created a summit for real estate, real estate investing. And I bought yeah. his weekend summit for 97 bucks. And, um, I remember too, Brian, bro, I remember yeah. this is that, and I knew, I knew this was going to happen too, but, um, I remember when I bought that, I had taken a screenshot and I had tagged you on my story. And I was like, when I get my first tech. I'm going to screenshot and I'm going to send it to you guys. Mm -hmm. And um, fast forward, like, I think it was like, like six months later, I ended up getting my first check in real estate from wholesaling. Mm -hmm. And I, and I took a picture and tagged you guys again, but that was super dope. But yeah, I ended up um, flipping cars full time and then using that money, rolling it over into education. And then I uh, tried to wholesale here in San Diego. It didn't work out well. I was trying to wholesale off the MLS. And then that failed. That's another story. I paid $10,000 to get into, into a coaching program. That didn't work out. The people backed out on me last second, and then I ended up starting my own virtual wholesaling business, mm. um, and that's how I ended up finding Knoxville, Tennessee. Started marketing there, got six properties under contract my first month, and pretty much the rest is history. Um, to the point where I ended up uh, closing on one of the houses that I had under contract. I moved across the country all by myself. I had no family. I had bought a Ford Ranger truck and just packed yeah. all my stuff and dipped to yeah. freaking Tennessee. And um, hung my flags and the, my racist flags in the front yard. <laughs> 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 and uh, uh yeah i lived out there for for about a year um let the property build some equity sold it and now i'm leveraging that money to build my business how was that bro like moving because i mean you're still young i mean uh, i think a lot yeah. of people are going to see you dressed sharp and all oh, this kid's probably like 30 yeah. he just looks young how yeah. was it moving and i'm assuming i don't know if that was your first time moving across the country and being by yourself for all that time well, prior to prior to me even knowing about not so the way I found Knoxville, Tennessee was I actually studied migration patterns off the U-Haul records. 
and I seen I like seen like oh place called Knoxville I was like I had no idea what, and I guess I called it Knoxville and people there were like yeah you're not from here because I guess it's Knoxville like there's yeah. a slang to it you know but yeah. anyways um I had never even been across the country growing up my family didn't have a lot of money so we barely left California I think the most I'd gone was like Arizona or something mm-hmm. like that for like yeah. half a day you know, so let alone going all the way to the East Coast to Tennessee was like a pretty big deal. And that was why I did that was because I told myself that um, this isn't my this is my opportunity to grow as a man, and as, as a as a as an adult. You know, it's my opportunity because, bro, it even goes back to um, back when I so I lost my first business. And at that time I was uh, so I was transitioning between living on my mom's couch or living on my brother's couch and living with my mom. Mm-hmm. So the time that I lost my business, I was actually living on my brother's couch and Around that same time as well, I had gotten my car impounded. I um, had no job, had no money, had no way of making money. I was completely broke. And my brother was getting kicked out of his house, so I had nowhere to go. So I remember that day, I actually remember calling one of my friends, and he, he pretty much saved me. And I was able to sleep in his little cousin's room that had a pink pink walls and flowers everywhere and i'd wake up on the futon creaking you know and and i just look and i see the flowers i'm like man i just gotta i gotta do something like i gotta figure some shit out and um yeah so moving out to tennessee it was finally my opportunity to have my own place Mm -hmm. and even when i was a kid i have always said that i know that in my early 20s i'm gonna have my own house so it was like my way of fulfilling that younger version of myself because i've always known that i've been i was gonna be on this path i've always known that's what i was gonna do so when that door presented itself i opened it wide open and um i went over there and it made me super excited i i liked the idea of going out and venturing into a new area meeting new people yeah. and not having any idea what, what was in store for me and um yeah that was that that was definitely an experience i would definitely do it again i would rewind and do it 10 times yeah. um it was definitely a really cool experience and i would recommend anybody do that um to to definitely push yourself and and improve as a person yeah bro because it, it takes you out of everything that you know and everything that's familiar to you, you know, especially when you move to a completely different state and city, different culture, right? You don't know anybody uh, socially. You have to start from zero. I kind of experienced that moving to Miami from California. Yeah. I fucking loved every second of it. Right. But, you know, not only do you develop, but it, it forces you to turn something that normally would be like a death sentence for most people, like especially socially. Right. Because yeah. we. Definitely. We set a lot of our, in, in quotes, like perceived value by that. Like, oh, I have a lot of friends. I have recognition in my city. Now I'm a nobody, right? And for a lot of people, that would be like, oh, my God, I don't want to do it. I have to go out and meet people and make a new friend, uh, friendship circle and social circle. That to them is like something they would never want to do, even if you paid them. Like, I guarantee if you offered people money, hey, I'll, I'll pay you like <laughs> 50 grand to move to Knoxville, Tennessee or somewhere else, they wouldn't do it. Um, so I want to add to this. Was there anything in that process of moving and being there for like a year that was like a struggle for you oh all kinds of struggle but i was used to it i mean the thing is i already know that struggle is what develops a person so when i went out there i wasn't expecting anything because when i actually when i moved out there i had like three thousand dollars in my account or two thousand dollars left so i was like risking it all i didn't i didn't (laughs) care i figured that you know what i'll go out there and i'll figure it out um and when i went there uh so it was funny so we how it works is that um, when I do virtual wholesaling, I have somebody go out boots on the ground, take pictures. Mm-hmm. So this property I bought I was on Minnesota, um, that Minnesota property I bought, um, the pictures look pretty good. And so I just went along with the pictures. So when I decided to move out there, that was my in, my thought, you know, my standard for that property. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and I drive over there three days or something and it's like four o'clock in the morning I like record too I get up I'm all excited like you know all right guys like I had just got here like you guys are seeing this for the first time I open up the front door the front door is all clapped you know it's like it's like hanging looks like it was like barely hanging on the hinges yeah and uh, I didn't care though at the end of the day because it's still my house that I bought from coming from nothing so right. always appreciative doesn't matter what even if it was halfway burnt down I wouldn't care mm. But um, yeah, so I end up opening the door. The The first thing I see is the carpet's like halfway up. It smells like piss. Just I'm like walking around. Yeah, there's like crap yeah. everywhere. And I was like, man, what did I just get myself into? And I remember being a little bit stressed out. No yeah. electricity, no water. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was kind of tri- tri- uh, tri- uh, trials and tribulations from the beginning, as always. But I figured it out, cleaned up everything. I took out a lot of the carpet. Um, and yeah, I haven't told anybody this too, but this is another crazy part is that I learned in that house when I was living there that there was cockroaches there and there was a bunch of cockroaches. And what happened too was that, yeah, bro. And what happened too was that at the very beginning, so remember I told you I I moved there with like $2,000, 3,000, I think 3,000 is an overstatement. I more than likely had 2,000 and 1,000. 
But when yeah. I had moved there, um, I seen the condition of the house and I was like, dude, I only have like 1500, 2000 in my account. Like, what am I going to do? And that same day too, I ended up learning about the cockroaches. And I was like, bro, mm -hmm. what am I, am I going to go back to San Diego, California? You know, I've already decided yeah. that I'm going to come over here. <laughs> so I was like, you know what it is, what it is. I'm just going to have to figure it out. And, um, I had no money. We had, I had no way. I didn't have any washer, dryer. I had no refrigerator, no stove. I literally had the like a Home Depot blanket that you use to like protect your furniture. I put yeah. that on the floor and I just I just slept on that for like three months for a wow. while. Yeah, and there, dude, this is where it's crazy too, bro. Is that <laughs> there's fucking times, bro, where I was laying on the floor and literally in the middle of the night, one o'clock, one thirty, I feel something crawling on me. I said, "Oh hell no!" I turn on my <laughs> I turn on my uh, my iPhone light and I there's a fucking cockroach on my arm or something like that. And yeah. that happened to me multiple times. But however, at the same time, I told myself, you know what, that this is just part of it. Number one, mm -hmm. that this is going to be part of the story for me to tell and inspire other people and to say, look, I moved across the country. Look at the condition of the house I lived in. There's no fucking excuse. You mm -hmm. figure it out. And at the end of the day, those times, those, tri those trials and tribulations are what are going to build you into your strong empire, going to give you even a stronger foundation. So when I was going through that, yes, it was upsetting per se, but I knew it was what I had to do not only for me, but for my family and to set an example. So it wasn't that big of a deal, but um, yeah, dude. And you even know too, bro, is that there was no heater. So during winter, I actually seen snow for the first time, like snowfall. Yeah. But I learned that the heater, I learned why that they had, when I first moved in too, they had like random wall heaters inside the wall, like that mm. you plug in. Yeah. And um, that winter I learned why. And it's because there's no heater in that house. So I would wake up and I could see my breath. And like, I would yeah. go work in my office and I'm like, I got the the extra coat on, you know, the, and then yeah. I'm trying to do my work, my cold calls, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, those are those are a quick highlight of uh, some of the struggles that I went through when, with that property. But the good thing is that I made like a three X return on that property, and now I'm able to scale my business at mm. an even higher degree. So three years down the road, and I'm looking back, it's going to be worth the sacrifice, which I knew at that time when the cockroaches are crawling at, on me at one three in the morning, I knew it was going to be worth it. Build character, right? <laughs> Build character, bro. Build a real strong character for sure. Yeah, man. And uh, that's awesome to hear, bro, because, you know, I, there's just so many people who, even if we don't take it to that extreme of yeah. like conditions and what you have to go through, like they're just not even willing to take like a step towards that, you know, and to throw yourself like that into it and be like, fuck it, I'm burning the boats and like, I'm just going to see this thing through is awesome, bro, because, you know, to, to, to hear it and then to see somebody experience it and go through it and then come out on top, which we know is going to happen. Yeah. For sure. You know, if they see it through, it, it, it's really cool, bro. So yeah. um, one thing that I think is tied into that. And I mean, you can comment if, if you believe there's a parallel here, you know, you brought up uh, your new podcast, right? Uh, road to mm -hmm. freedom. Correct. Yeah. Am I saying it right? Mm -hmm. um, promoting free thinking. Do you believe that having more of an open mind and being a free thinker is almost like a prerequisite to put yourself through something like that or that at the minimum it would facilitate it in regards to your willingness to go through it yeah the 100 percent parallel and that's why too is that that's why i love america so much is because america is uh is the 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 rich soil for people like that for free thinkers um and yes absolutely because i can tell you too bro is that growing up um, on my mom's side of the family, a lot of people failed uh, trying to start their own little ventures and things like that. And on my dad's side, mm -hmm. they're all nine to five workers. So when mm -hmm. I decided that I was I, I decided I was going to drop out of college, it was a classic story of the parents saying, you know, what are you doing this and that? And it, I had no family. In my business has ever been successful in business. I had no coaches, no mentors at that time. I just made a decision that I wanted to do that. It felt right to me. And I knew what my capabilities were. And despite everybody saying it was a bad idea, I still did it. And what I can tell you, in fact, with my cut with color subtle details, I remember people were making fun of me. I remember I had an in quotes friend that was saying, oh, you're, you think you're going to wash cars for a living. Like you dropped it to college. You're going to wash cars for a living. And I remember saying, OK, all right, yeah. keep yeah. fucking saying that, you know, Fuck and you're going to see what's going to happen. Yeah. And um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's all goes with free thinking. And the thing is that the reason is, is because everything goes through my filter first. So if it's, if I feel like something is right, or if I feel like it's something that I can do, then that's what it is. I don't mm -hmm. consult for other people unless that person's already been to where I want to go. And that's the only reason why I would ever ask for anybody's opinion. Other than that, I know exactly where I'm going and where I'm headed. So there's nothing going to stop me. And that's the mentality it's going to take to get to, to acquire new feats for anybody, because in order to get somewhere you've never been, you have to do things you've never done. 
And I'm never going to look at any of my of my family who try to be successful in business as an example and tell me what to do. Because in fact, I'm going to do the opposite because whatever their way of thinking got them their result of failing. So therefore, whatever they tell me, I'm going to do the opposite. So yeah, 100 percent, bro. Um, free thinking and just the overall idea of thinking on your own is definitely parallel with becoming successful as an entrepreneur or any kind of, you know, sole entrepreneur venture. Is that an attribute that you say you've developed or would you say you had that seed in you from birth? For sure. For she, for sure. Since I was a kid. I mean, my mom was telling me too about how like uh, when I was like a baby or like a little toddler that I looked like I was always thinking. And um, I remember all the time it was always I was always questioning, like, why is that? I've always had the ability to critically think. And I even remember when I was a kid um, with Christianity, my family was extremely Christian, my, especially my grandparents. My grandpa was a pastor. He used to go across the world preaching to people. Mm-hmm. And um, that, so that was kind of like the standard in my family. Um, now, with my parents, it wasn't as like strict or as crazy, but we still had that, that, that foundation in our family. However, even as a kid for me, six years old, I was already questioning those things. So I don't know what it is. I don't know if, if I came with my soul. I already experienced 10 lifetimes or what was going mm-hmm. on or but. But yeah, definitely since a, since a child, I've always had that. And that's why, too, I remember a long time ago, bro, 2019, when I found your content, it was almost like now I had a way of watering that seed because mm-hmm. I've always searched for somebody who's been who's discovered more and kind of paved the way already to kind of look back and feed, mm-hmm. feed the next generation or feed the next person. And I've mm-hmm. always sought out that. And when I found your content back in 2019, that's what was able to more of water that. And it felt like I was like, I remember thinking back then and watching your lives back then and stuff like that. Like now I finally found somebody who can actually help me grow in this way that I want. Mm. And, and now I'm, I was remember I went to, um, I ended up going to, to church like last Sunday, just cause I was curious. And when I had went, um, I was paying attention to the pastor and I was like, just, just observing him, seeing how he was a leader, what he's saying. And also the things that they're saying in Christianity, I was just curious, you know? Mm. And, um, one of the things I had thought back then um, was that, uh, you know, what it just, it just overall just makes me question. Um, oh, this is what I was thinking was that when I was looking at the pastor, the pastor was really, he was younger. He was maybe like in his early forties. And it made me think, man, what I really need is like some, some sage guy who's like 75 years old, who's like has a bunch of wisdom yeah. and is ready to pass it on. And it's like real wisdom. He, you open up his library, you see a bunch of scrolls in the background, you know, yeah. that's the type of guy that I'm trying to learn from now, mm-hmm. you know, but um, but, but yeah, to answer your question lightly, that's awesome, bro, because I can totally relate. I was the same way. And then when I would ask questions, they're like, bro, just shut the fuck up and listen, or just, just do what you're supposed to do. Cause same thing. I remember, you know, being in church, same thing. Cause you know, my family, uh, pushed religion on me a lot when I was a kid. And I would ask what I thought at the time were just thinking questions. And I would be like shunned and silenced and told, don't think just fucking accept it. Yeah. Which is and, a bunch and, of bullshit. Yeah. Right. And it was just like, what the hell? Or being told, like, you know what? You see a nice car. You're like, oh, I'm going to buy one. They're like, oh, don't even look at that. You'll never have it. I'm like, why not? Why not? You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Exactly. So, And I always ask that because a lot of times I find from people, whether they admit it or not, they always go back to that when they really think they're like, you know what? The seed has always been in me because I've questioned things. It was just shunned or I was told to be silent. And then somehow, whether through listening to somebody going to an event or whatever epiphany they had, they started cultivating it again and saying, okay, I really need to use my noggin because yeah. I think in a lot of cases, people, it's like they find out something that they thought was true was a lie, you yeah. know? And then it, it, it just starts everything and they're like, wait, For if sure, this is dude. a lie, what else is? And then everything starts unfolding and it's a, yeah. it's a beautiful process, man. Is that kind of what you're focusing on on the podcast? with the Yeah, very, team? very similar. So I remember a long time ago too, when I was struggling um, and obviously I'll still have struggle as I continue forward um, as anybody will. But I always remember saying um, on on the be- beginning of my come up that um, when I get when I'm successful and I become much more wealthier and I have much more knowledge that I'm going to look back and I'm going to help people out who are in my predicament. Because like I said, I had nobody around me to teach me. And it was always me just seeking information from anywhere that I can. And I always wished back then that I had somebody who can just like pull their hand out and help me out and pull me yeah. up. And I told myself that back then that when I do become successful and I'm rich and I'm wealthy and I'm knowledgeable that I'm going to look back and I'm going to help out every single person that I can. So that's a big part of the reason why I, I launched the Road to Freedom podcast is for that reason and also to spread the truth because right now I feel as though it's the most important time to stand up because um, mm-hmm. as you can tell, I'm a huge advocate for this country because this country allows the individual man to become free and to become wealthy unlike a lot of other places in the country. Yep. 
And right now it's under attack. So I'm doing everything in my possibility that I can um, to spread as much freedom of information as possible. Yeah. Um, and another thing I, want, I was thinking about too, bro, uh, was that when you were saying that, like kind of when, why is that? The thing is that, why is that? Why is that when we're a kid, you know, we're not even exposed to anything yet that we have that seed within us of critically thinking or questioning. Is that by purpose or is that by coincidence? You know, and I don't think it's by coincidence. And I think a lot of the times too, is that those people, they intentionally try to suppress because they know that there's something special about them. Who knows what can be special about them? But yeah. I think the intent is to destroy critical thinking and to destroy that individual who has the capability of thinking at a higher level because they're a threat to their mm-hmm. essentially what they got going on. Um, yeah. But we can say that's a story for another day or however you want to say it. But but yeah, that's that. I don't think it's by by coincidence. I think it's by design that we're certain people were born with the capability of critically thinking for sure. Yeah, and then you know you look at everything else. You know if you start unpacking this. You know, and we could even do another podcast about it. You look at literally everything from like the foods that you consume mm-hmm. to, you know, the programming, right? The TV, stuff. everywhere you turn. It's like yeah. literally yeah. everywhere. You, like they get right. you anywhere and everywhere you can think of. It's they're getting you anywhere mm-hmm. and everywhere you can think of. And then, too, when you when, when you come out and you start speaking about this stuff, all of a sudden you have the tinfoil hat on when no, it's the actual <laughs> genuine truth yeah. of what's going on, which is yeah. the crazy part. And the thing is that the thing is, this is the major question is that if they're willing to do this at every turn, what does that say about them? What does that say about these people who are setting these things in place? Do you think that they have the best intentions for you and your family? Probably not. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing that really upsets me is that the fact that there's certain things in power or certain things in play to to harm the the public and to harm the people. And that's what enrages me because there's a lot of people who have good hearts who are taken advantage of. And Mm -hmm. to me, that's not okay. Um, And that's why I think it's super important to continuously – to not push an agenda on somebody, but to allow them to, to critically think and to think freely. So therefore they can come up with their own conclusions of things. Yeah, man. And a prime example of that, that I think of is my family, bro. Like my family in South America are good people with good hearts, but like most of them, I would say 90% of them in their heart of hearts, they believe that I'm doing shady shit. And the only way I'm successful in America is because like I'm pushing drugs or something like that. They literally, they're like, yeah, they're like, you're doing that or you're like an actor or you're a professional athlete. Like there's no other way for our family to be wealthy. Like yeah. we're just not born for it. Right. So that same thing you're talking about, they're a product of that just being mm-hmm. trapped mentally in the system, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Right. And it, it pains me. And that's why I don't get upset about it. But like when I tell people that like on the street here, like they think I'm joking. I'm like, bro, like that sounds funny to you, but it's legitimately true. Like if I was to FaceTime like my aunt right now. She'd be like, are you being careful? Because like, I know for sure you're doing shady shit or like, does the government know what you're doing? I'm like, <laughs> I'm a businessman. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what the fuck, right? So it's really, it's really interesting, bro. And you're right. We do need to talk about it. And like the one thing I kind of want to wrap up with, because then I'll let you talk more about the podcast specifically if you want. I'm one of those people of probably many, I don't know what the number is now, who just for doing what you said and, and speaking about truthful things, even doing it the right way, we've had our social media just fucking thrashed. Like I had my Facebook deleted, my YouTube demonetized, my Instagram fucked with, right? Is that something that you're thinking about as you're doing this? Or is it just fuck it? We're doing the podcast. I'm doing my stuff and it is what it is. Um, it's, it's maybe a mixture of both. I mean, I'm not trying to be like Alex Jones getting sued for, I don't even know how many millions of dollars or whatever. But at the same time, what I tell myself is this, is that I, I don't care what ends up happening because at the end of the day, as long as I stand behind my truth and what I believe to be right is all that matters. Even if I get censored, even if I get assassinated by the government or the CIA or whatever it is, <laughs> um, I don't care because at the end of the day, I'm standing by my truth. And I think every single man should be able to do that no matter what. And the thing, too, is that the way that I try to go about it in my kind of path is, is like I said, to, and one thing I always stress and say is that it's not about left or right. It's about what's the truth. Truth mm-hmm. doesn't pick a side on the political side. There is no there is no political right. side when it comes to truth. And the way of my frame of reference is that all I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to cultivate conversation. I want to bring people who like communism onto my podcast because why do they think that way? And an interesting conversation I had, I went to Ohio and uh, I paid like, it doesn't matter. I went to um, an Ohio that an an Ohio event where we talked about real estate investing and it was about how to scale your business, essentially be able to do six figures a month. And um, so that kind of sets the, the, the idea of the type of people that were there. And there was this one guy who was about socialism who was there. And we got into a conversation, super random, right? Isn't that very ironic? Like, bro, do you right. know where you're at, dude? Like, yeah, right, this is exactly. like an American like meetup, yeah. basically, you know? But anyways, um, 
I was curious. And the thing is that I didn't, I didn't berate him. I didn't thrash him for his ideologies. I was curious. Why is it that he thinks that way? Mm. And when we had started having a conversation, he thinks that the government should be, uh, should be empowered more to help the people out. So yeah. what does that mean? He thinks that his actual idea behind the reason why he believes in socialism and communism is because he wants to help the, the common man out. So yep. he thinks that the way to go about that is through communism when that's the actual exact opposite of what yeah. to do to help the common man. Um, so that's why I think it's 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 strictly it's extremely important to open dialogue and to have conversation because just because a guy believes in socialism doesn't mean he's a bad guy. You know, he could have yeah. good intentions. Um, so there's definitely a lot of people who believe in communism and socialism who are good people, too. But mm -hmm. the point is just to raise the, the conversation, the questions up. So that way we can all come to uh, the same conclusion and all move together because united we stand, divided we fall. So right, right. now is the most important time for unity. Because any kind of civil war would completely destroy America and will be the nail in the coffin there. So I'm doing everything within my own power to um, to continue to move down that path for sure. Love it, bro. So um, I'm obviously going to link, you know, your personal stuff below your podcast. Is there anywhere you want to send people to find the podcast or to reach out to and all that fun stuff? Yeah, a couple of places. So uh, a good place to look up the podcast will be YouTube. We have a YouTube uh, platform for it. It's called the Road to Freedom Podcast, um, as well as you can look it up on Spotify, Apple Podcast. Um, and also feel free to follow me on Instagram at Austin Lupercio. Um, and feel free to hit me up, slide in my DMs and have a conversation about uh, capitalism. You hear that, lady? <laughs> slide into his DMs. Yeah, exactly. No <laughs> pronouns, though. Cool, bro. All right, man. Appreciate you coming All on, right, bro. Uh, we'll probably definitely do a part two, but I see some. Sure. I see like Nikki and John in the comments. You guys are coming on next. Hey, so you better let's get ready. Go. <laughs> All right, bro. Peace out. All right, John. We'll see you.